Stat Tools allows you to create confidence intervals for common population parameters. Does this from its statistical inference dropdown. It also allows you to run hypothesis tests on these parameters and to run a few other common hypothesis tests. Finally, it determines sample sizes that ensure sufficiently narrow confidence intervals. This video illustrates some of the possibilities. The dataset you see here will be used to illustrate confidence intervals and hypothesis tests for a few population parameters. Note that the variable in column H is a dummy variable. It is 1 for all spending amounts over $1,000, and it is 0 for the others. Confidence intervals. When you select confidence interval from the statistical analysis dropdown, you see the following two options. The first option is for a confidence interval for a mean, a standard deviation, or the difference between two means. And the second option is for a confidence interval for a proportion or the difference between two proportions. Only the two difference confidence intervals are illustrated here. The others are similar. To get a confidence interval for the difference between the mean spending amounts of males and females, you choose the mean standard deviation type as the confidence interval type, and you fill out the dialog box as shown here. As you can see, there are three analysis types. And for this analysis of differences, you should choose the two sample analysis. You would select paired sample analysis if the males and females were paired in some natural way, such as spouses. You should also select stacked as the format. Then gender is the categorical variable, amount spent is the value variable, and I want a confidence interval for the difference between means. The difference analyzed by default is female minus male, but you can check the reverse order option in this dialog box to analyze the male minus female difference, as I will do here. Here are the results. The left column assumes that the variances of spending amounts for the males and females are equal whereas the right column doesn't make this assumption. In this example, the results are almost identical in the two columns. Each says that the males spend somewhere between $271 and $504, on average, more than the females. The test at the bottom is for equality of variances across gender. A relatively large p-value, such as the one you see here, indicates that it is safe to assume equal variances. Next, I will create a confidence interval for the difference between proportions, specifically the proportion of males who spend over $1,000 minus the similar proportion for females. Here I select proportion as the confidence interval type. Again, it is a two sample analysis, stacked format. The C1 variable gender designates the two populations, males and females. And the C2 variable designates the 0, 1 variable that is the basis for the proportions. The category I will analyze is the high spending amounts, the ones. Again, I will analyze in reverse order, male minus female. Here are the results. The two sample proportions are 0.599 and 0.366 for males and females, for a sample difference of 0.234. The confidence interval says that with 95% confidence, the corresponding population difference is between 0.173 and 0.294. Sample size selection. Each of the confidence intervals just obtained has a certain half length. You can check that the first one has half length about $117, and the second one has half length about 0 .06. In the planning stages of an experiment, it is often useful to find the sample size or sizes required to obtain a confidence interval of a desired half length. 
StatTools lets you do this with its sample size selection procedure. I'll do this for the difference between means first. The half length I will ask for is $50. It requires an estimated common standard deviation and I will use 950 because that's about what it was in the samples. And the results show that about 2774 people of each gender must be sampled to achieve this level of accuracy. In the same way, for the difference between proportions, I will request a half length of 0.03. It was about 0.06. In this case, you need to estimate the proportion of high spenders in each gender. If you don't know that, you can enter 0.5 for each and this will lead to a conservative estimate of the required sample sizes. That is, the resulting sample sizes will certainly be large enough to achieve the desired half length. In this case, the results show that 2135 people of each gender must be sampled to achieve the required level of accuracy. Hypothesis tests. The StatTools hypothesis test procedures for the various parameters are very similar to the confidence interval procedures, so I will discuss them only briefly. Again, I will run a two-sample analysis for the difference between mean amounts spent across gender and the alternative hypothesis will be that the males spend more than the females so I will make it greater than. You have to be careful about the direction of the test. In this case, I have specified the alternative as the greater than variety, and I want to test that the male means is greater than the female means. Therefore, in this dialog box, I have to reverse the order, so it is male mean versus female mean. Here are the results. Again, this is for equal variances, this is for not equal variances, but they are about the same, and each has a p-value that is very small. This means that the null hypothesis can be rejected at any significance level. In other words, you can conclude that the males spend significantly more on average than the females. Next, I will test whether the proportion of males spending over $1,000 is larger than the similar proportion of females. Again, two sample, stacked format, same variables as before. For variety, I will set this up in a slightly different but equivalent way. I won't reverse the difference. I will leave it as female minus male. However, the category I will analyze is the low spending category, the zeros and the alternative will be that the females have a larger proportion in this low spending category than the males. I won't reverse this. The results indicate that there is indeed a significantly larger proportion of low spending females than males. ANOVA StatTools also includes procedures for one-way and two-way analysis of variance, or ANOVA. Both of these are illustrated with the data you see here, where 60 golf balls of each of five brands were driven and the yardages were recorded. The temperatures outside were also recorded, but they are used only for two-way ANOVA. For one-way ANOVA, the question is whether there are any significant mean differences across brands, and if so, which brands have significantly different means than which others. To run the one-way ANOVA procedure in StatTools, you select one-way ANOVA from the statistical inference dropdown, and you fill in the dialog box as shown here. You select stacked as the format type, the categorical variable is brand, 
and the value variable is yards. You can choose any of the types of confidence interval methods. It turns out that the Tukey option is a good option when you are comparing each brand's mean to each other brand's mean. Here are the results. The key value in the top part is the p-value in the ANOVA table. This small p-value indicates that the null hypothesis of equal means across brands can be rejected. When this occurs, the interest centers on which brand means are significantly different from which other brand means. This is indicated by boldface entries in the bottom part of the output. As you can see, brand E's mean is significantly larger than the means of brands A and D. These are negative, and these are negative, and boldfaced. The other differences are not significant. Two-way ANOVA lets you check whether the means across brands and temperature differ. For two-way ANOVA, STAT Tools requires a balanced design. This means that there must be the same number of observations in each of the brand temperature combinations. With five brands, three temperatures, and 300 observations, this means that there must be 20 observations in each brand temperature combination, as is the case here. If the design isn't balanced, Stat Tools displays an error message. Now I will run it. The two cat variables are brand and temperature, and yards is the value variable. There is a lot of output, but the key output is in the ANOVA table. There are now three p-values. The first two are for main effects of brand and temperature, and the last is for the interaction between brand and temperature. The first two very small p-values indicate that the means across brands are not equal and that the means across temperatures are not equal. However, it is possible that some brands are longer in one temperature and others are longer in another temperature. This is essentially what it means to have an interaction. StatTools provides two similar charts of interactions. If there are no interactions, the lines in either of these charts will be parallel. Although the interaction effect in this case is significant at the 5% level, the lines in each of the charts might be judged to be parallel for all practical purposes. Chi-square test for independence. The last procedure in the statistical inference group is the chi-square test for independence. Its purpose is to test whether two categorical variables are related in some way. The example of laptop and desktop sales shown here illustrates this test. Each number in the table represents the number of days with each joint category. For example, laptop sales and desktop sales were both low on four of the days. You might suspect that high sales of one type would tend to go along with low sales of the other, reasoning that they are substitute products. This is one form of dependence, but there are others. The data shown here has purposely been colored differently than the other StatTools datasets you have seen. This is the one instance in StatTools where you do not create a StatTools dataset as the first step in the analysis. Instead, you select chi-squared independence test from the statistical inference dropdown, and you fill out the dialog box as shown here. You specify the range, which can have the headings, but it doesn't have to. And you can give titles for the reports. Here are the results. The top three sections list the original counts in three equivalent ways. The counts, the percentages of each row, and the percentages of each column. The next section lists the expected counts if there were independents, 
and the section below it lists a distance measure between expected counts and actual counts. Everything is summarized at the bottom with a chi-squared value and a corresponding p-value. The p-value for this data set, slightly less than 0.05, indicates that the null hypothesis of independence can be rejected at the 5% significance level. In other words, there is evidence of some form of dependence, but the evidence isn't overwhelming.